Welcome to Connie Martin's and Talks Books. My guest today, Julia Butler, has written The Last Encore. It's a novel, and it takes place beginning in Russia, and will take you really almost around the world to the denouement here in Los Angeles. But it is a book that will hold you. Welcome, Julia. Thank you, Connie. And you've used the uh, Moonlight Sonata as your, you, you almost should give a, a little thing that you could start to play as you're reading. Yes, and that's what I did while writing the book. I always turned on the Moonlight Sonata uh, by Beethoven, one of my favorite pieces. And uh, that really helped me to get into the groove, and I, I always kept it on, played over and over again in different interpretations. And uh, I am a, a big fan of classical music. And, and it takes place, I said, it begins in Russia. Yes. A little girl named Lily at the time Describe Lily and how her life evolves. Lily had a very, very difficult childhood. She lost her parents to horrible circumstances, and I'm giving a lot of uh, history, Russian history. And uh, Lily was left completely alone by the age of eight and was adopted by a kind older woman who was trying to find her sister. She knew that Lily had a sister somewhere and um, was desperate to find out that Lily's sister died and Lily was alone in the world. And then she passes uh, away as well and Lily remains alone. Yeah, the book opens with the old lady dying yes. and Lily is now going to uh, music school. Lily was um, an actress, uh -huh. so she went to the best acting schools in Russia, and she became a very prominent actress. And, but deep inside her life, once the curtains went down, her life was very unhappy and very lonely. And Lily was longing for a child, and that's all she wanted, and she couldn't have children, as she was told. And then suddenly she gets pregnant, and there she, gets, um, she gives birth to a little boy named Alexander, who unfortunately um, gets run down by a car at the age of six, and Lily again is, is, um, has this misfortune and is alone in the world. She ends up in America, but before that, there's a little girl who plays piano, and her parents, uh, Maxim is the father. Yes. And the mother is? Irina. Irina. Yeah, that's and my mom's name. It's a wonderful family. Yes. And poor thing, they are killed in a car accident. Yes. There are a lot of misfortunes in this book, and, and they somehow connect all the characters mm -hmm. who m all meet later on in life yeah. in Los Angeles. And our friend, the, the young girl, um, is going to music school. That's what I was thinking of. And she has a professor, and she is smitten with him, Yes, and he is intrigued by her. Uh, talk a little bit about that section, because it's like out of a movie. Yes. Catherine, my protagonist, is again um, stricken by, um, by a terrible drama. Her parents, her father gets into a horrible accident, which was arranged. Uh, at his job. They were poor factory workers when Catherine was growing up, but it was a household full, filled with love and music, and those parents were so much in love, and they were one. So her mother uh, couldn't bear losing the love of her life, and um, later she marries somebody who was believed to have orchestrated that accident, and her mother is so devastated and, and unhappy, but she's doing everything to keep uh, her ex, her hu husband's, her, the love of her life's dreams for his daughter alive. So her current situation allows to provide the best music education, the best skating rinks for Catherine to grow up to be a beautiful young woman. And Catherine de, de Cordova. 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 Typical yeah. Russian name. Yeah. Catherine Konova. 
And she's also a figure skater? She's a figure skater. She's a talented pianist. And at a certain point, she realizes she has to make a choice between figure skating and piano. And she decides to apply to the Moscow Conservatory. And um, the first year, she meets uh, a much older, very charismatic uh, piano. Uh, piano teacher who is a, a musical genius and she gets smitten by him and being completely lonely and um, and quite insecure that is the relationship that really sucks her in and becomes almost obsessive mm -hmm. uh, in a way and of course for him it was um, yeah. a, a very interesting adventure he was a married man uh, but he allowed this uh, little fling on the side. So yeah. obviously for him it wasn't a big deal. But, but you wrote it so beautifully because you see it happening step by step by step where they get together. Then he seduces her. Then she realizes it's a two-way street and she holds on to him. They take an apartment and then it's almost as if it can't go further. Right. And I don't think she would have been happy married to him. But she was hoping it would go further. Oh, and she every really young wanted girl hopes because that. Because he misled her yeah. in many ways, telling her that his marriage was very unhappy, that it was childless. And she was hopeful that she could be. She felt uh, a lot for this Is man. there an older man who seeks out a young, beautiful girl who doesn't say it's an unhappy situation at home? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, okay. What happened to the figure skating? Uh, she had to give up the figure skating, but before she started her conservatory yeah. studies, she embarked on a world tour and had very successful, beautiful performances. And her last encore in skating was um, actually in Germany. And uh, that was a very meaningful performance. And she saw her dad uh, appearing in, in mm. her imagination in the audience, and um, that carried her through her legendary performance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, how close is this to my guest Julia Butler's life? Oh, <laughs> very close, uh -huh. of course. I, I drew a lot of myself into um, yeah. uh, this character, Catherine. And um, and I also stepped into her shoes and and lived her experiences very passionately, and uh, in a very involved way. But a lot, a lot of her background, of course, is is my mm -hmm. life. From there, she what? There's a David Adler. There is Daniel Dan Adler. Yeah. Yes, a German writer, very ta talented German writer and poet, who uh, is experiencing uh, some uh, strange situation in his household as well. He has a very strange connection with his mother. Uh, basically, uh, his mother is very affectionate and She's very cold towards yeah. him. And he's trying very hard to appease her and, and to build this, this uh, relationship and, and gives up at a certain point, realizing that there is no... There is but she is no like, way. the mother is like that to the father. She's, as well. she's a very cold woman. Uh, it was obvious to Daniel that she was hiding some secrets uh, from her mm -hmm. past, and nobody could really quite understand her. Yes. She lived in Germany, yet she had Russian origins, and um, then married a German man, um, Daniel's uh, stepfather, who mm -hmm. was extremely loving and kind towards him. And at that point, Daniel decides He's already seen the girl with red hair? He, yes. It was his fantasy. Yeah. He, uh, he saw a girl, a red-headed girl, in, in an ominous forest. forest mm -hmm. And he couldn't quite understand if she was real or sh if she wasn't. Yeah. But he became obsessed with this girl uh, all his life um, until he finally found her. But where does he find her? In Los Angeles. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I know. <laughs> also, uh, there had been poor Sophie with the blonde. Yes. And that doesn't work out. That is his first girlfriend, and it was a very dysfunctional relationship. And I described that relationship to show uh, that Daniel, at a certain point, when he finally broke free from that relationship that was very difficult, 
uh, he knew exactly what he wanted in a woman, what he, he basically sculpted the woman of his dreams in now, his mind. Now, Catherine comes to Los Angeles, and there is an old lady named Lily mm -hmm. who takes her under her wing. Yes. Which I must say, anyone who comes here, or any city, really big city, and you're alone, it helps if somebody is there to say, come over for dinner. Absolutely. Or I'm having people I want you to meet. And she does this. Yes. Especially for an immigrant, when Catherine uh, came here, uh, she was actually immediately embraced by mm -hmm. the, you know, Im immigrant yeah. society. Uh, there's there's yeah. a big group of Russians in Los Angeles. And Catherine has married. She has married. Actually, she immigrated with her husband. And he is well-to-do at that point. Yes. And they have a child. Two children. Two children. Two girls. And Chelsea uh, and Hannah. Yes. Yes. And it is in this milieu that uh, Daniel comes. Yes. Daniel arrives, uh, invited by Lily, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, because she had read something. He had she read his essay. Yeah. Daniel was very philosophical, and he was very much into Rilke. And uh, he posted an essay online about Rilke. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was, Rilke was his favorite writer. And um, apparently Lily saw that essay, what a coincidence, and he wrote to Daniel how impressed she was with his... And um, if you ever come to L.A., I have a salon, I would love to have you meet some people. Yes. And he does. She invites yeah. him to Los Angeles, and she even offers to sponsor him. And uh, he doesn't take that offer. And when he comes to Los Angeles, he doesn't even bother Lily right away. He really wants to get on his feet and start his life and then connect with Lily. Yeah. Yes. And while he is at the first dinner party, lo and behold, who should be there but the little girl with red hair. That's almost like out of Peanuts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the little girl with, woman rather, with red hair. He can't, it's as if all his dreams have come true. Yes. He sees the woman of his dreams. He sees exactly the woman he saw in the forest. Uh, he has been obsessed with, yeah. with this woman all of yeah. his life, and he finally meets And her. they do get together, finally. Yes. He has been living in a, with a poor actor, too, and the sharing uh, and room expense. Yeah. Now, here he is going to well-to-do homes. But he can't get over this love, and she has fallen in love with him, too. Yes. She's in the middle of a divorce, and who better than a young lover? Yes. Well, it, it's a beautiful May-December romance. It's yes. a very real connection. Their, their, their relationship, their bond is like a Gordian knot. It's, it's unbreakable. They, they share something that is undeniably very strong. And it's not just a physical connection. It's, it's something way deeper and uh, more meaningful than that. And she's not just a cougar. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's not no. just a cougar. She's actually, uh, she actually goes very slowly into that relationship mm -hmm. because she has two daughters and, and she realizes how careful she has to be. Also, her divorce is not final. And uh, she, yes, she has been separated mm -hmm. for, for a long time, but uh, she had to hide this relationship and even, even to reject it initially for, mm -hmm. for a while, just uh, being very careful, uh, preserving her family's peace. And the one way she can bring him into the family is as a teacher. He says, I'll come and teach your daughter's German. Yes. Her older, her older daughter actually studies German as a second language at school. Mm -hmm. And it was a perfect um, opportunity for Daniel, who, who's, uh, whose mother tongue mm -hmm. was German, to actually help uh, Chelsea yes. in her German studies. And that's what, what now, they do. this is your first novel? This is my debut novel in English. Mm -hmm. Yes. I used to write and trans translate books in, in Russian. And I studied literature and creative writing at the Moscow University. So uh, yes, this, this is my attempt uh, at American literary fiction. So you have also lived through Glasnost. I've lived through Glasnost, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I had my entire childhood uh, went um, by in Russia. 
And uh, yes, I've lived through Glasnost, even though I've been out of Russia for a very long time. Your daughters have grown up now in America. Yes. How different was their early years from what yours were in Russia? You know, I have incredible memories of my early years in Russia. I, my parents, you know, I was, Kanye, I was um, listening, I was watching your interview with uh, Larry Elder the other day, mm -hmm. and it made me realize how incredibly fortunate I was to have the parents I had. Yeah. My father and my mother taught me the way. They showed me the way. My yeah. dad was, was a mega accomplisher. He spoke nine languages. We call those people What did polyglot. he do for a living? He was a teacher in languages and he wrote and translated books. He translated Ibsen, a Norwegian writer, oh, really? into Russian. And my dad was a super achiever. Well, my mom was a concert pianist, ah. and she came out of Moscow Conservatory. That's why I, I'm so familiar with classical music, yeah. because since I was five years old, I was playing piano, and uh, cultural life in Russia was extremely abundant. Mm -hmm. So we would go to concerts every day. Yeah. I went, uh, I listened to Van Cliburn when I was six years old and uh, you know e mm -hmm. ev every week there was something going on. Yeah. So early in my early childhood I got obsessed with um, Horowitz, yeah. Vladimir Horowitz. I, I still am extremely familiar uh, with classical music and uh, and I should tell our friends in the audience that each chapter is as if it is part of that music yes. where it's either Andante or something else, right. but it's at the top of the page that opens that chapter. Yes, yes. I Actually, I constructed this novel as a musical composition, and I call every chapter opus, and also there is a sub-chapter title, which is a musical term. It could be crescendo, which means growing mm -hmm. you know, volume. Or, or duet, the, the, the yeah. um, chapter uh, with, uh, where, where the piano teacher meets Catherine, the older man meets Catherine, it's called duet. So it, 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 it describes exactly the, uh, the mood and the, the topic of the chapter, but my reader will have maybe to, to Google some, yeah. some uh, terms, musical the terms. What have you been doing prior to writing a book? I have been doing a lot of things prior to writing a book. I've been um, researching this topic because this book is not just a love story. It's an exploration of a very interesting psychological phenomena that, that shed light for me um, at something that took place in my family that happened in my family and, and was shared with me when I was a teenager, something that, that puzzled me. And, and bothered me all my life. And what is that, I came, may I ask? I am in a very vulnerable spot because if I go into details about what it is, I will reveal the ending, mm -hmm. which the book just came out and I don't want to do it. I really would like to gain my reader and engage into in, in discussion, but I definitely uh, I look forward to discuss the um, the, the topic itself because it's 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 quite a high concept book mm -hmm. and it it explores the the um, happenings that something that happens right and left and something that is not discussed because it's considered to be borderline taboo and uh, I believe that it's very important at least to be aware of this as a society it is our responsibility we don't have to accept certain things but mm -hmm. denying things that actually happen a lot, I think is also not right. Uh, so without being specific, all societies have secrets. Yes. And th this goes even if with children who are not told they're adopted, um, that this is part of one wonders when you hear about like Daniel's mother. Yes. I mean, it's what was it, you know? Daniel's well, some secrets have terrible consequences. They destroy people's life. And that's what happened with um, my family, mm -hmm. you know, members of my family. They 
they were s- there was so there was such a lack of understanding and compassion to those two people who were affected by um, by this particular happening yeah. that they ended up in a horrible suicide suicidal depression and uh, oh. they drunk themselves to death and mm-hmm. it was just a big tragedy in the family I don't think I, I think it's preventable pre- preventable if if we're only a little bit more sensitive and more more knowledgeable about I think too I'm going back generations but I think any time you have a family uh, in a large family that has immigrated to another country each one has a story of what was left behind of course of course. But, you know, Connie, I just couldn't put that story to rest. Mm-hmm. I would come back to it all the time, and, it, and it's been decades since then. And, and I, I just five years ago, I found all the answers. So obviously, it was something that really bothered me and mm-hmm. that really was looking for some resolution. Yeah. So, so I just think, I, I, I think I did what was what I felt was right mm. to do. I wanted to find the answers and I wanted the explanation and understanding of what happened in my family. Have you gone back to Russia? I've gone back to Russia. Uh, I haven't been in Moscow since 86 for a long uh-huh. time, but I've been to Ukraine and... Um, Did you meet your mother? Oh, your mother's here. My mother's here. My, my whole family's here. My brother's here and my, my father passed away, unfortunately. Uh-huh. And, and I wish, I, I wish, I, I try to tell him every day how much I, I appreciate and how much I love him. Because, yeah. because then we thought it was the norm. Yeah. You know, my brother and I, we had the happiest childhood and we, we took it for granted. Yeah. We thought everybody had that kind no of childhood. No questions yes. asked, <laughs> as long as you were going to <laughs> opera or to yes. piano. We were exposed to so many activities. Yeah. Now, are you writing a sequel or another book? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I am writing a sequel because the the book stops uh, a, a, at the point where I just had to take a breather. Uh-huh. Where I, I felt that it was getting so intense, mm-hmm. and uh, I stopped there. And I felt that the, this particular story is complete, but there is definitely a sequel in my heart and in my mind. And uh, for, for those who are watching, who write but maybe have not written a book or finished one. Did you go to a writing class or did you have any sort of uh, editor or person who helped you? I wrote the book. I just decided to write it. And, um, and my daughter, was a, my youngest daughter, was a big encouragement. So I started working on the book and the only time I had was very early, I would, I would wake up at four in the morning and write from four to seven, then take my daughter to school, then go to my day job. So it was, it was a, a big effort. Yes, I worked with three fantastic editors. I was never happy. I did a lot of rewrites. Writing is rewriting. And um, it took me a year just to polish and bring, bring, I really wanted this piece to be literary. How did you get an agent? I did not get an agent. Ah. I, I, Connie, you know, it's a, it's a, I felt like a, a squirrel in, in the will. Uh-huh. Squir- squirrel? Squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel in the will. So, uh, sorry, I'm Russian. We, sometimes we mix words. And, um, uh, yes, I queried many agents, and everybody complimented on the book, but felt it was too risky, uh, it was too bold, too, too honest, uh, to uh, courageous, <laughs> yeah, okay. and I decided I decided that this is such a great time to self-publish. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. I decided that the topic is so relevant, and in fact, Europe is uh, is loudly discussing it, mm-hmm. and even even altering some uh, some pertaining laws. And so what was your day job at that time? I've always I've always been a marketing strategist for clinical laboratories. So I still, I still have a day job, uh-huh. and um, I work for Universal Diagnostic Laboratory as um, corporate strategist and marketing consultant, and uh, that's, that's my day job. That's and that should be also, I would think, fodder for another book. Day job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe call it that day job. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes, but this is passion. Writing is passion for me, mm-hmm. and um, I... 
I'm continuing to work on this no on this novel, on the sequel, uh -huh. and writing screenplays as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and which are actually comedies, the complete opposite. Oh, really? I love writing hilarious comedies yeah. as well. So I have a new screenplay that I'm in the process of uh, developing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's already done. It's called The Marriage Myth. And uh, it's about the crisis, midlife crisis, and marriage crisis. <laughs> Which is because it's not the old days where you're 21, you get married. Don't Absol know. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's mid 30s. <laughs> it's a different world. But exactly. Thank you. Will you autograph my book? Absolutely, Connie. With pleasure. Thank you. And if you'd like to know what else we've been reading, visit me on the web at www. Connie Martinson. Dot com. You can read our columns from the Beverly Hills Courier. You can also go to Claremont Graduate Universal Digital Library, and they have over 3,000 of our shows. They have digitized so that they will not fade away. And uh, go to YouTube. This show will be on. But the most important place you can go is your public library. That is the best place for anyone to take a child, to see what they're having on for the week. They will have music, they will have lecturers, and they will have the books that are on the shelf. So whatever you do, use the library. Thank the librarian. They don't get enough thanks. They are the most important person in our growing up. What did a library mean to you when you came here? Oh, I, I, when I came here. Or even in it, Moscow. Yes, uh, I would get lost in libraries. Yeah. I love spending time in libraries. I love the quiet. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connie. Thanks for having me.